All right. Well, welcome to another. It does kind of feel like we were just here, <laughs> John, but this is one point by fast, but maybe that's <laughs> just me. Um, <clears throat> we're transportation committee meeting for June. Um, we'll call this meeting to order and start by Roger here, Steve here, Portia here. Great. Craig? Here. Tuck? Here. Peter? I am. Okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, John? Here. John, I'm here. Great. Um, the next item is an approval of the meeting minutes from our meeting today. Did everyone get those? And are there any questions? Comments? Okay. You want to make a motion? I'll second it. Motion to approve the minutes. Second. Great. Uh, I'll, or, um, I'll take a roll call for approving the minutes. Roger? Yes. Steve? Yes. Portia? Yeah. Uh, Craig? I hope same since I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Fuck? Yes. Peter? I think it's a liaison, so I'm not okay. aware. Okay, yep. I was going to ask, on this one, I can't remember. I think you do get, but I'll double check. I right? know. Yeah. Okay. I, I, it's I, a different. I know this is, it's, the committee um, is not actually listed in the committee ordinance. Mm. So there's not instruction on whether liaisons are oh, okay. or not. Or what, okay, I'll what, double check. What, so yeah. Um, John. I don't vote. Yeah. All right. Just can't vote. John. I vote. Yes. Um, great. Thank you. And the next item, item three on our agenda is a review of the draft townwide transportation study. So hello everyone. I'm filling in. <laughs> Angela is on vacation. And so I'm filling in. And we we put together all your comments from our last meeting, but to Jen's point, it was a quick month. And so what we talked about last time has not been incorporated into this. This was the next step for them to get us this draft to look at. So I think the plan is to talk about section four mobility and to go through that section and then put together our comments and anything that's missing or you want to add or talk about. And then if we have a chance, we'll go on to section five. So that's my plan. Just um, I, I printed off one paper copy because it seems like no one wanted it. But does anybody want it? <laughs> can, can I ask a process question mm -hmm. for this? So the one, th <clears throat> the one thing I'm hoping we get eventually with that, and I don't know if we are, so this may be a clarification. Mm -hmm. When we did the Parks and Facilities Master Plan, one of their outputs was kind of taking all the recommendations and then <laughs> kind of creating a roadmap of what to do and when. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see that in there. And so I'm hoping though we get something like that. Yeah, let me process. actually let me open up something and I'll show you what we sent them. And so so we had um because this might be careful good for you to understand. So we included general comments. <clears throat> we wanted um guiding principles, because we have a lot of information, but we were missing sort of like, what are we trying to do? It's the goal, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we had a lot of definitions that we wanted to add. We wanted them to address the public input and outreach section that was missing and how that worked into the sections. Um, the implementation summary, I think that might be sort of what you're getting at. Yeah. I wanted to cross-reference each section. I have this thing drawn on my whiteboard. It's like, okay, mobility says this road, head says this road. And then there's like, if it's three checks and it's a really good and it can be better priority. So we want that. Okay. Um, that's what, that's exactly what okay. I was Perfect. Um, and then just so you all know, these are the comments that we put in for- Before you go there, you got to incorporate the comprehensive plan in there too. Mm -hmm. um, as the long range planning, the, the assignment, that's kind of my, my <laughs> um, that I didn't see anything about that. 
No. But then, and um, if there's going to be prioritization or if there's going to be um, sort of, uh, um, there's prioritization which, which comes out somewhat from the study, but there's got to be some prioritization that comes out of the objectives of the conference mm -hmm. as well. And um, without seeing that, it just feels like. Yeah, that was, they didn't have that address at all either. So. That was part of it. Um, have they seen the comprehensive plan? Have they had oh, plans? yeah. Okay. Um, and then for section two, for the summary, we had some questions and we wanted to add a lot of details. Um, and then safety, we had some of the comments that we had from last time. So, and I can I can be happy to send you all of these if you want, just so you have them, so you kind of keep a rolling tab of what we've already talked about. Sure. Um, and so when we go through it tonight, we'll take notes and then Angela and I'll go through it again like we did last time. We'll say, okay, this is wrong. This is, we need to add this and that. Um, then we'll get another draft and then we'll bring it back okay. and keep working on it. I, it's going to be market delivery. Of I believe so. This is a, it's been a bit of a different process because we were, we were really getting after some planning document. Um, some plans for impact fees and some plans for specific things. So then trying to create this transportation, it's, it sort of went at it a little backwards. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there, okay. but it's going to take a little bit longer than we thought. Um, so yeah, I'll send these out to you guys. So with that, if you want to just get straight into section four and yeah. start talking about mobility, okay. So section four, mobility. There's a lot of stuff in this thing. There's a lot of stuff in it, right? And I want all this stuff to be helpful and useful. I'm all about that last sheet that says, this is what thou shall do. Yeah. Like go make these things happen. And that I think yeah. is always- Having said there's a lot of stuff in here. I'm, I was kind of surprised at how much of that stuff we don't have. Right. Yeah. Yes. This is my first interaction with this document. It felt like a good study, but that's all of it. Like it was, it was a, yeah, exactly. It felt like a good review of, you know, safety and review of where things are moving fast and they're not moving fast, et cetera, but not really a, a set of prioritizations or a set of, Mm -hmm. of guidelines for where we should go so yeah it was I, but i wasn't sure what the this is remit the first was, so, draft yeah um w was the remit though for a planning document or for a study um because again as a study it stands pretty well on its own list it's supposed to be a plan mm -hmm. but we went about it a bit different so it's, it's going to be what we want it to be when we get there <laughs> Uh, who else is going to look at, look at this yeah. grant and have any impact on it? I can elaborate further <laughs> later. Sorry. Who else is going to be involved in going over the whole draft and have an input on that? Uh, so you guys and then staff. Yeah. Um, I would like to take it to long range planning for at least the high level. Like, you know, are we crazy or is this make sense? Um, yeah, long range planning. Once, once, once we've it's a much more developed topic. Right, right. Um, then I think we will apply that long range. Mm -hmm. um, and, and transportation is one part of the long range plan, but it does intersect with affect all the other vision statements that we have to plan in common. Um, but we're happy to do that. Yeah. yeah. I think that we do that, that as a role. I thought that would be a great um, review once we get to a good draft that we're comfortable with in this committee. And then it'll move into um, probably a workshop with council. And then from there, it um, they'll let me know. Would you would you go. consider like for instance any discussions about Route One, for instance, or any of the business sec sections in town 
would you give any consideration to talking to any of those groups? We don't have any of that built into our budget or our specific. Now, what I can tell you in long range, we are going to do, um, I'm calling them area plans, neighborhood plans. Um, and so we're gonna look at Oak Hill first and we're gonna take into account lots of things. And so this plan would be part of that conversation. We'll take into account architecture, parking, uses, all of that. So I think that's the way we're gonna try to engage the community is in small bite-sized pieces where it's really relevant to like your conversation about the height, right? That's where we have those conversations. Um, so I think that's how we'll engage the community with that. We are supposed to have a follow-up uh, public input public, you know, here's what we came up with meeting. So we'll have that too. I don't have that schedule yet. We're not ready for that. Um, Our conversations in long range planning about, for example, on Route 1, is really not about Route 1 as a unified quarter. It's about Dunstan mm -hmm. Gap, um, uh, sort of the, the, the downs beginning, or the, the Hags part here, the um, intersection there, <clears throat> bit of a gap, Oak Hill. So it's, it's kind of like th th there are these zones that are separated by by speed yeah um and um and and we've been watching with we've been looking at interests with the idea of, of a more unified route one approach across southern maine um that may help inform some of how we do it but but our real approach initially has been as, as i mentioned start with oak hill but oak hill will lead directly to dunson it will lead directly to um uh, to, to uh, the hags public and yeah. uh, we'll see what now, if you did want to get any public input, I think a good model would be Coulomb Road, the way that was handled initially with the sections there. Mm -hmm. I think there were five sections. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first section, people who were the abutters in that area were informed of what was going on. Yeah. And there was a meeting and everybody had a chance to at least become aware of what's going on. This is a little bit, this is different since it's, Townwide, yeah. but when we have those focus groups, that is how we'll. I mean, it'll be like knocking on doors and very personal and um, yeah, so specific. Like, like what we talked about for Oak Hill is um, actually, I like the idea of actually giving the mailers or butters to let them know that we're talking, but actually going around to different businesses and, and getting their input, talking to them, getting their thoughts about sort of what works and what doesn't about parking access, about, um, uh, about the design of sidewalks, about things like that. Um, and literally going to individual businesses and, and um, uh, uh, multifamily residences and things like that to, to, to get the ground, the grassroots view of how things work. So, yeah, that, that we really want to do that for the building trust. Yeah. The, the reason I brought up the business is because, to me, Route 1 is an economic drive. Mm -hmm. And if Route 1 is, I mean, I can, I can see where Route 1 is, is actually hindered some commercial development because you can't get stuck. can't get a left out so you don't go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 so how Route One is ultimately designed is very important if you mm -hmm. want to fully develop it as a business car. All right. So let's get into this. Um the way they have it broken up are different sections with recommendations for what can be done. This is for mobility. Uh, and then they have some costs attributed to it. So again, that sort of cost and everything will be rolled up at the end. Uh, this first section, and, and you guys tell me how you want to go over it. Um, this first section is Payne Road and Gallery Boulevard. And they've provided options for um, making it work better. Um, and then you can see what the corrective action, you know, the first thing is a traffic study and then changing the through lane to through left lane and then constructing left turn lane. So you have some levels there, of proposals. Mm -hmm. um, I was not honestly a little surprised to see this one in there because my experience at that intersection is usually never- Not a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I actually have more issues at the other intersection of Gorham any, any of the other ones? Yeah, any of the other ones other. in that area. This one is like the, Funny. like, and it's usually it's not a lot of traffic. And again, yeah. I don't travel during peak hours, so I don't know if during right. Maybe peak hours it's different. Yeah, but I don't know. That's my experience. I don't know about the rest of you guys. 
Yeah, no, and, and I was surprised to not see other areas of pain road included in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we do have an entire plan mm -hmm. for pain road improvements, and that's what's driving our traffic impact fee discussion mm -hmm. as part of it. Again, though, this I'm I'm living in the four quarters of the stocking. Yeah. Right? So that we we don't have any discussion of the of the pain road to Route One. Uh, that that weird little jog you do when you come down on, on the way there. Mm -hmm. uh, What's they have it all included in this conceptual plan, Pain Road and Haggis Parkway at the end, the appendix. So what so how does that intersect then with the section four? So they have, I think they have it's um C appendix B sheets one through twelve for drawings of all proposed changes to the Pain Road corridor. And so what's planned is um two um four lane sections a foot median the entire way to allow for turning and, and divided and then you have a sidewalk with an esplanade and a shared use path on the other side so so speaking as a citizen that's not a helpful way to understand how the pain road segment inclusion is here intersect with appendix b okay yeah that's um cool. you know Crossing that over two fundamentally different portions of the document, one of which is the appendix, not a, a, a main section, isn't helpful. Um, so understand, and, and maybe that's a general comment here. Um, you know, you've got Payne Road and Gallery, Payne Road and Haggis and Warren, and an appendix. You got Running Hill Road Number Fourteen, Route One, and uh, and then Route One and Broad Turner Road. Um, you know. The, why these five in this one? I was curious how they came up with these. So and, and, I will and, tell you the pain, the pain road. I don't know why there's just five, but I know the pain road is really. We knew that we needed to do a design for pain road. And again, I think this is a bit backwards. So now this is the justification for the overall four lane design for pain road. And so it seems a bit disconnected a totally like you're not hurting my feelings because I didn't write any of this um so Portia had a oh um, sorry hey Portia yeah hi uh, I guess and I'm not seeing the visual here for the for mobility but I'm thinking if you look at Gorham and you look at at Haggis and potentially through the downs those are the only cross town access roads and they really are very limited in terms of ultimate mobility for not just cars. Because of the stream crossing on Gorham, you've got everything that funnels down there. And I know that that's supposed to be widened, but still I have real concerns about Gorham. Um, but now going through the Downs or going through Haggis, those are the only ways we get across town in, in uh, Scarborough. So it is. It makes sense, and they all intersect with Payne Road. So it makes sense that Payne Road becomes critical in all of this as well. And so part of this too, um, the sort of random part, Peter, since you weren't in the, here in the beginning, is to re envision Haggis Parkway. And so those plans are in here as well. And Haggis Parkway is essentially a four lane, and it's more of a boulevard section. So it's also has the aesthetics, the tree lined, um, which really like the entryway into, into the community. So that's in here. Um, so are there other intersections that you all want to add or think are missing? I, I, again, I guess I, as a study, how are these five or four or five chosen? And is there a longer list of others that were excluded, either consciously or unconsciously? Because um, you know, can I think of other intersections? Sure. Um, there's on the other side of road, uh, side side of town. There's Pleasant Hill and Seventy Seven. Um, that's always kind of an, an odd one. Um, there's uh, a, a Black Point Road and the end of Seventy Seven. Yeah. 
Um, is Highland and Pleasant Hill Road. Highland and Pleasant. Yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah, that's a good one. Basically, what we should have is some justification, right? So yeah. we should look at our intersections with the highest amount of um, traffic, through traffic, and local traffic going through, and then we pick those, and then we prioritize them. And yeah. then that, and, we're just missing. Yeah. We're working backwards, and it's coming across very strange. I, think I agree. The, I would say the one thing too to add is like going back to the comp plan and our high growth areas, like mm -hmm. which intersections maybe today are okay from a mobility perspective, but which ones are at the greatest risk mm -hmm. so that we can get ahead of modifying those before they are actually. And I think we've done that well with Tigus and Payne Road yeah. identified. We just haven't got ourselves to that point. Mm -hmm. It's like we've but, arrived at our destination, yeah. but we don't know how we got there. Mm -hmm. And even like as the, the downs continues to develop and some of the other high growth areas like again are we are there pinch points that we just need to be thoughtful about okay yeah particularly in ways that maybe fall kind of through the cracks so i'm thinking of like within that so starting there okay looking at our growth areas and what is maybe working now but maybe couldn't um sustain the growth that we're in targeting in those areas as a planning board member to be highly of interest. Um, but also what what of those areas may be subject to DOT improvement or um, or is not or is solely on a local road where we can't even seek state age, you know, or something like that or that. Um, because I feel like when like it's one thing to have a prioritized list of projects or even mm -hmm. troubled intersections. Spoiler alert, most of the intersections are gonna fall under um, some sort of yeah. DOT jurisdiction. And so I'm not saying don't consider those or don't consider the other ones. I just think it's like two noteworthy columns sort of. Well, the point you're making is like, if we fix one, or we still gonna have an issue that's just gonna bottleneck at the next yes, spot. Yes, exactly. And the so, one, the example that I'm thinking of, sort of like on a larger scale, is you know the downs by way of all their development and all of their offsite mitigation. They were responsible for a huge amount of work. Um, but like the next one that didn't quite make it was the forum at Payne, Payne Road. It didn't didn't make it because it didn't you know their development didn't justify. Um, the, the mitigation needed associated with that, but it doesn't mean it's not a problem. Right. <laughs> well, and, and, and also the, the, the Ray Hill Road in 114, um, there's a problem with that one, but there's no mention in this for contextualization within Scarborough Connector, or that, sorry, the Gorham Connector. Um, and the Gorham Connector will directly impact what you'd want to do with this intersection. Um, I, think, I think it is in the report on something. Yeah, it? it didn't show up on section four here. Yeah, so. yeah. we added it. We asked them to. Yeah. The, the, you know, the other thing that's interesting is the dynamics of this community. For instance, five years ago, I don't think too many people were concerned about Holmes Road and, and Cambridge. <laughs> yeah. And now with the downs, you know, with what might go on the other side of Holmes, not Payne Road. And then where, you know, and Holmes Road is a real issue, as the planning board discovered. Yeah, with the, with the development that went in there a, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. uh, that's a highly traveled road. It is, yeah, and uh, it's been practically neglected or forgotten about mm -hmm. right, unless you live on it. Yeah, but that's an example of a, all of a sudden an intersection that's becoming a prominent intersection. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, another sort of high level comment that um like to make is that you know mobility in the sense that it's presented in this report is overwhelmingly like if it were to be defined based on what is here it's defined as how do we move as many cars as fast as possible and that might be many people's definition of mobility but it's inherently unsafe to other modes of transportation and so I would challenge the consultant to continue looking at this and maybe expand that definition a little bit so that we can look at 
you know, we're not causing, we're not kicking the can, we're not causing a mobility problem for a different mode because we're improving it for something else um, over here. And right. I think that is what that's going to look like in the short term, but this is the, you know, it's a notable effort. And so particularly in our growth area, like there's some intersections where that's, maybe that's just a, a, a no brainer, but, you know, others um, anywhere on Gorham Road, for example, um, you know, where I, we should just be mindful of like not pitting anything against another and causing, solving one problem, but causing another. So. And, and, and the comprehensive point, I think, in distinguishing high growth and low growth areas, or non high growth areas, which I'm sorry, the low growth. But um, the, I, I worry that we have a the mobility aspect of this has us using the, the non-growth areas as um, throughput areas. Highways. As, yeah. As, as, yeah, as, yeah, as potential future highways. Even, you even said it, your definition of, of looking at the Route 1 was like attention in different neighborhoods separated by speed. That was your term, and yeah. I thought that was yeah. noteworthy because I don't think that you're wrong in like a realistic sense. I think that is what's happening, but I'm not sure that's what we should Correct. want. No, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And and I'm thinking about the area what's the turnpike. Um you know there has been a lot of residential growth out there, but there's also a desire to maintain um green space, um green space quarters, um creatures crossing roads don't like 50 mile an hour um through it. Yeah. Well people don't yeah, there's plenty, plenty of creatures. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the way that the mobility description reads here pushes you in that direction. I think this is why it's important. Like, as you were saying, like, at some point, there will be a grid that says this roadway is like really great for all of these things and what that costs. Because I think looking at each factor individually, I think loses sight of the other factors that are just as important. So making sure yeah. that mobility, safety. Um, I thought of mobility mostly as like getting cars through faster, but multimodal, like you want multimodal to happen as well. So I think well, it seems like we're going to get there. It seems I, like this just that's the idea. And I think my brain sort of sees that at the end. It's like, OK, section two, pet. This is where we want pedestrian focus. And then we go to bikes and we want this focus. And then we go to mobility, which is really like automobiles at this point. And then we tie them all together and we have this great list of roads and we have mm -hmm. everything. And then we prioritize based on what we can achieve that accomplishes all, right? So like our pain road plan accomplishes mobility for vehicles. It accommodates pedestrians. It accommodates the bikers. It accommodates safety. It accommodates uh, aesthetics, mm -hmm. all those things. So it, yeah, it's just, I think we yeah, all want to get I, this same I think, place. I don't think it would be inappropriate to just call it that. Just call it that. Just make it simple. At a higher and level maybe, is there a board. better term maybe? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that maybe they can come up with something else, but, but um, you know, to call it, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of how I've name interpreted. Is, this is like vehicles. Yeah. And it's all separate. And then how it gets tied I'll, together. I'll purpose mobility. Yeah. And I'm going to be real honest with you guys. Um, we are probably going to have to do some of crafting of this, wrapping this up on our on staff. Yeah. Um, we've spent a lot of our budget on the design work. And I think it, and now, have to do some pretty plan pretty planning uh fluff as Angela likes to call it to the document to make it work. So so this is helpful. Uh are there so generally for mobility we're looking for for one, how do we get here? Why do we choose these intersections? What are the other places that we're looking at? Are you with for the ones that are in here, are you in agreement, or are you okay with the ideas that they proposed um, for these particular locations? Or is there something that you're like, what? That's a terrible idea. I mean, they're not really multimodal. <laughs> like, they're very car centric. So, gotcha. gallery at Fane Road doesn't include pedestrian provisions. 
anywhere other than where they are exist. I mean, that's a hey. problem and probably relevant to more than just that communication. I do share John's kind of surprise just as a motorist. Don't it. It's probably, I'm surprised it's made the top five. Um, so it's. Do you think they have a list of honorable mentions? But <laughs> like I'm still... That would be great. Yeah, I'd love to see that one. <laughs> now, some of these are going. To, some of these intersections are going to be incorporated into the Downs work, right? No, not these. Like Payne Road from Pegasus to Golem. Mm -hmm. They've done their work there. They have their one more project. What it um, they have the light at Muzzy on Payne to put in. Okay. And then we're using their design. We're going to propose a new design for the Gorham at Payne and perhaps another impact fee next year. Um, but that's about they have Oak Hill stuff to do. Were they considering all of those? projects as they did this to us like a a given that these things are coming to mm -hmm. make sure yeah going back to the mm -hmm. you know if we add the light at muzzy to me that was a safety thing not right. an ability thing and so now we're going to create another situation of a potential bottleneck so again it's just trying to make sure and i think this is what everybody's saying it's like there's a big stretch of road mm -hmm. on pain or there's a big stretch of road that are like the major thoroughfares. Mm -hmm. And so if we're looking at them holistically, how do we make sure we address it holistically and not one little thing here yeah. that then creates another problem that now we need to like- Well, I think that's where we spent a lot of our money because we rolled the road down onto left. the table, mm -hmm. yeah. the entire thing. And really we looked at property ownership and where potential um, mm -hmm. curb cuts can go and zoning and all of those things and then you know trying to we'll put the sidewalk on one side because it connects into the apartments on muzzy and there's a school there and the shared use path and planning for maybe there's a mid block or something that happens in the middle for warren woods so we really spent we spent a lot of our money yeah. on that part mm -hmm. um so we did and then highest park we did the same thing mm -hmm. really taking a look at you know, Scott O'Hill Road, the natural inclination is like, oh, let's just make that a four leg light someday. But the fourth leg of that is completely inundated with wetlands. Mm -hmm. And so we had to think outside the box mm -hmm. for that one. So that's the plans, I think, are really well thought out in that regard. Yeah, for the uh, power of what? Mm -hmm. The one thing surprisingly, maybe these are the honorable mentions, is like there's only one intersection on Route One, right, with Hannaford Drive. Mm -hmm. And again, I that's always what I hear. Like people are upset about Route One. It's all usually Route One and Payne Road that are the problem right. with Gorham Road as a distant third. And so I'm just surprised that there's not more Route One recommendations. And I know that's probably partially because it's hard for us to probably impact, but I think we're also waiting on the adaptive I mean, signals. Yeah, 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 that we need to figure out. Yeah. I think we're waiting on the signals to be fully functioning along the corridor too, but it, but it should definitely be acknowledged. Yeah. So mm -hmm. at that. But even like again, when I think of all the intersections right. going down to one, the Hannaford one doesn't come to me as a problem. Usually, what I do, it's just my secret, so don't do it. <laughs> like when I need to get places, I go down that <laughs> Hannaford Drive. Like it's usually when I'm driving down. I can see the backup happening. And so then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna cut through, go through the campus, get to town hall. Like <laughs> my my wife taught me to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a that was a, and it's not a secret. That was definitely analyzed as part of one of the last or the last, I can't remember. Um looks that was done at the Oak Hill intersection right. about maybe potentially reallocating some lane usage. Like there's a right turn lane near Walgreens, take a right turn onto 14 from mm -hmm. southbound, but the, the utilization of that is incredibly low. It's mm -hmm. like two vehicles are a long time ago. But anyway, presumably because many people are doing that. And so um, 
Yeah, when you have other options, it relieves the pressure a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. <laughs> Certain areas. And so, you know, I don't think um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, my, my only of the ones that were chosen here you know, beyond the council land, I think are running Hill Road in the 114. It seems premature to address that without more understanding of the land connector. Because that's going to, I, I, I don't see us making a decision here that wouldn't be immediately trumped by whatever the construction pathway or the or the ultimate um, on ramp, off ramp availability on the connector would wind up looking like. So we just, I agree with the assessment that this is a pain. This is a pain crossing, pay, P A I and <laughs> crossing. Um, it's a painful crossing to, to, to navigate, but it's just I, it is what it is. I wonder if it could be identified as like a problem area, and then instead of providing a fully flushed out recommendation, it's just put on the list. It's on the honorable mention. Yeah, it's on the honorable mention. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Because that should help in both directions, right? Like yeah. at the time at which that is coming up as part of any separate conversation, sure. the town can say, look, we studied this. We know it's a problem. Yeah. Here's what we, you know, yeah. things should happen or what we'd like to see there. And we can also inform like, hey, the world connector is going to throw a bunch more traffic coming can't in from there. It's like we've already addressed this. This is a, this is a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the mobility section needs a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to move on to section five? Sure. Okay. Let me pull it back up. So this section is access management and network connectivity. Um, so there's still a um, Regulations, there's corridors selected for corrective action, and then there's an honorable mention list. So this one basically gives you some um, education, if you will, and some access management methods. Um, I just have a question. Answering right now, but for those of you that are involved in relevant conversations by way of other committees, I am always just curious about what kind of leverage or but um, encouragement the town can offer properties, privately owned properties, to coordinate or work together in an effort to address some issues around access management. I know that generally our development guidelines sort of have you looking at like your own private property mm -hmm. and then what impact you might have on the right of way. Maybe there's rules around number of driveways, size of driveways, like that type of thing. But if we're saying um, here and in a plan even or anything in between look we, cleaning up access management is really important to us but like what can we do to help out <laughs> so we're here for you because the long range planning committee we have um, a draft ordinance for those sections site layout and includes access management it's going to start its run at council in july yeah. and then hopefully that'll get back to planning board and then you'll have some leverage and some some teeth and ordinance yeah because otherwise it's just like thanks for working together or yeah. sorry, but deal. right right we've also addressed this or, or, or realize mm -hmm. that we need to address this in parking standards as well yeah. um and that's come up and i don't think we have a finished product there yet but we definitely have a identified that as a key area of focus for us so. Yep. Yeah. um so yes i read this as i look at the especially the route one i'm glad route one was highlighted here it's it's mm -hmm. Um, uh, we we started it with the idea that we take again we take Oak Hill as a starting point for it, but it is a general problem, and and whatever we figure out for Oak Hill, either should be generally applicable and create a coherent Route One corridor, 
or we have specific needs for specific reasons why that wouldn't be. For example, crossing the marsh. You're not going to have the same rules for crossing the marsh as you're going to have for other areas. Um, but what is great about crossing the marsh, there are people in the room that we are going to be able to incorporate some pit, ped and shared use crossing. Yeah. They, so we're we're trying to get, it's like all these things yeah. happening, and I think it's going to, in 20 years, we're not be tired of the lake or the beach. It'll all be good. <laughs> but I think there is a plan for it all to come together. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So, um, but um, no, in, ter in, in, in terms of reading this, the, the the only one I wanted to, the, the things that came across me were these selected quarters for future study. Mm -hmm. Do we think these are the right list or do we think that there are others that are part of that study? County Road from Stockton Street to the Florida Line. 114 from Kane and Multi. That's where these are. I'm not as familiar with the Pine Point area, but I'm always hearing Don Hamill talk about issues with things down there. So I just don't know if would would this apply in the Pine Point area at all? Could we expand that? Yeah. Yeah. It would and actually Pine Point from like Pine Point from um the uh, uh again the marsh crossing to the intersection with the East Grand Ave. Um, you've got diverse uses there. You've got the legacy restaurants and things like that. It's all RF, but it's you've got Ken's, you've got Bailey's, um, <laughs> you've got uh, Pine Point Grill, you've got a couple of churches. You then have the town and village around the snow canning area where they do all the pot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then that area where you go down, down by the plan bank. That would be a good one. And I know Don and I talked about yeah. that. That's why, well, just like as an example, yesterday I was coming from Little League trying to turn left to get on Pine Point Road, and people were coming out of Bailey's. They were coming out of like some people were driving across the Bailey's ice cream parking lot into the Bailey's lot, and so I'm like having to watch like yeah more people leaving yeah. to make sure I can pull out. Did they still have rope stuff across? No. In the Bailey's restaurant? Not the ice cream, but the Bailey's restaurant? No, they have, don't they, they've got a rope that defines where the front is. It's, okay, they still have those up, right? Just that first one, yeah. Okay, good. By the road, yeah. Good. Um, but that's just my like, contribution to there's all those access <laughs> <laughs> There's all those access <laughs> right there. That yeah, I'm like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot happening. Yeah, right there. there is. Uh, which I think, you know, kind of like what we were talking about before with regard to mobility, I think in terms of access management, you should like, everyone probably easily recognizes Route 1 and maybe even even more so the Oak Hill area is having an access management problem. It's tons of driveways, lots of movements coming in and out. But um, I think it would be great if this document, and it, it sort of does in the by the way of, um, you know, the kind of the access roads and driveway spacing, we're sort of hinting at it, but just making sure that we have <clears throat> some to that this results in some tools available to us to prevent a pain road from looking like a group one eventually and right. whatever other corridors rise to the top of the future in terms of being further built out yeah. now, road maybe yeah. now a few years ago we we had a series of workshops from uh from a gent down at pine point mm -hmm. regarding complete streets yeah and to me, my impression is that that was everything was kind of all set up, but it was designed so when funding became available, we, we could go, you know, move forward with any of that work. Yeah. And, and some of that required uh, state land, swapping some land down by the barbecue place. Right. <laughs> um, that. Reminds me of another sort of overarching comment that I had about this was that this study really doesn't address complete streets <laughs> by name or by design at all. No. Um, and you know, we kind of talked about it earlier in terms of breaking sections out by mode, but I sort of think that that's what's kind of our and and I can see how that would be helpful in some ways, but I mm -hmm. also think that that's sort of anti that's kind of not in the not always in this in the spirit of 
Yep. Um, executing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Street. And the complete street policy was, was a was a prominent part of the town. In terms of talking about forward looking street design and potentially remediation of yeah. some of the more egregious mistakes that we made. Yeah, that. and I actually have in my CIP budget, I won't start until next year, um, to uh, do the complete streets toolkit to like further that. So that many great examples. Yeah. We all do not need to be reinvented. <laughs> Oh, I can save money. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> sounds like the whole thing sort of needs to be reconfigured. And I think that's probably Angela and I've made like, why are we, what are our yeah. overarching values and how that sort of lays it out? And I think that's really. What we're struggling, you all are struggling with the same thing we we're struggling with. So, um, okay. You know, when I was really going over this whole report, the thing that struck me was I went back to the, uh, you know, the things we have with the uh, comp plan, with the, with the consultants and they're, you know, they're getting information from the citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing that struck me was we have a lack of connectivity in town, mm -hmm. all right? And a lot of that has to do with the wetlands and the marshes and everything like that. Uh, but then the other thing was the lack of um, shoulders on the roads. So so people could either feel like they could walk their dog along the road mm -hmm. without getting clipped or ride a bike. Cause, and I, I was really surprised at how few um areas in town especially all upon the east side of of, the, of our route one that has has those you know shoulders mm -hmm. and when i look at the those are those are big things to me it's, it's a lack of connectivity and um and the lack of shoulders on the roads because and i understand you got to do all the planning to make sure everything's in place in case you do get funding but we're not going to get everything done. You know, we're not going to get everything we want, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't follow well, the last part. Well, for instance, we had this discussion with Angela at the last meeting about Payne Road, and I brought up oh. doing it in phases. Oh, okay. Okay, and, and she explained to me, well, we, we, what we have to do is we have to lay it out as if everything's going to get done. Right. But I just wonder whether everything's going to get done. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether it's going to be done, it's just you look at the road, look at Payne Road now. The reason it's not a full, you know, four lanes or whatever is because the taxpayers don't want to pay for that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that's traffic impact fees. You guys could all go to speak in favor of tomorrow <laughs> night at the town council. I mean, at, you see it all around town. You see these these bubbles on the roads. You see it's wide, then it sure. gets narrow, then it gets wide again. No, and the only reason it's why is because whoever is developing something here is going to be paying for it. That's where I think having something, a document like this, is helpful because it can either shape those de development, like be handy when development conversations come forward, or then be used. Um, in support of other, and I, I did actually the section uh, towards the end where they include information about a variety of funding sources. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really helpful um, because, you know, I don't know, once upon a time, I remember working in this realm and just thinking like, I only study so many things and I have all these documents with all these fantastic project recommendations, like there's no, there's never going to be money for it. And then, you know, fast forward, all of a sudden there are all sorts of federal funds available for a variety of things mm -hmm. and not always available for the things that you want them for. But we were, I was at a point where we were making stuff up on the fly in order to apply for these types of applications. And so having documents like this, that yes, they might seem totally far-fetched today, and maybe it never happens. Maybe there aren't funds that come forward to, to revamp an entire corridor. But I guess my point is that you just really don't know. Um, and if there's no vision for it, then 
even if that opportunity does present itself, you're flat footed and um, right. in a region where, you know, Scarborough is not really going to be competitive for the same types of projects in the same way at the same price points that Portland is, but certainly, you know, Cumberland, Freeport, like, you know, all these other ones um, would be. And so I think just being well positioned to. I, one, of, one of the things though, that you need to think of too is like what I would like to see is like a four quadrant grid of you know impact versus cost so that way we know like what are the high impact high cost things that are going to be challenging to your point because going to the voters and asking for a 20 million dollar bond to fix pain road right now actually we wouldn't have to ne technically go to them but I don't think that would go over well with our community. And so making sure that that's in the box of we got to find grants, we got to do this, we got to use TIF funds, impact fees, whatever, to try and minimize the impact of costs there. But again, there's got to be some like low hanging fruit, like high impact, low cost mm -hmm. things too, that again, that's why I want to see kind of the roadmap, because those could be things that we chip away at in our right. capital plan every year to make sure that we're addressing them, because it, it is frustrating to see like all the stuff happening in pain road. We get a little fix here, a little fix there, but the problem is still a problem. Yeah. It's not it's not a complete solution yet until we get what's been envisioned, right. but how do we make sure we actually get that yeah. financially in a way that we can hopefully keep Scarborough affordable on top of all the other capital projects we need to and do. And even, even if, if that's a four quadrant thing, I can picture like two boxes on the other side of that, which would be, how do we stop? How do we make sure we're not making something worse yeah. by way of policy or ordinance? Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Jen, that really we funny. should have like a master plan. I, I do agree with that, but I'm just looking at it from my, from my, from my realistic point of view. That, and I'll give you a good example. And I remember uh, when I first got on this on, on this committee, talking to Angela about this as Pleasant Hill Road going into Route One, mm -hmm. and how that's really now that's that's a lousy intersection right now mm -hmm. because left left hand turn road um, onto Pleasant Hill Road. Uh, but it's it, we're going to live with that now for decades, probably, because there was no there was no master plan mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm when funding became available. So I do think it's critical to have all this, just like Route 1 right now. I mean, there, there's, there's a plan, but there's no funding, as far as I can tell, to, to take care of, you know, straightening out Route 1. So I'm not talking about the intersection, I'm talking about the, I think there's like seven different designs of Route 1 just in Scarborough, you know, and to get just those all in some sort of a consistent, Form, mm -hmm. but it's that's going to that's going to require some some funding from the state. So mm -hmm. at least there's a plan there. Yeah, when it becomes something, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's another story. What I find interesting is like we need to have and look at the map here. There's I think there's a fairly obvious, very limited set corridors that dominate. Now we're thinking about how we get across town. You got Payne Road, you got Route One. On the west side of town, you got Pine Point going at a broad turn. On the east side of town, you've got Black Point and, and Pleasant Hill. Um, and then you've got 114 going up. And then probably a one step down from that is Beach Ridge and Holmes Road, which connect the two on, on west, which are the, the major connectors of the West Garden, uh, west of the Turnpike. Um, if we took those seven roads, and said, okay, the, the, these are what we need our master plan for. Um, and and the infill around there, now we're using complete streets as a guy as a guidepost. Um, as quarters, they have to meet pedestrian and bikes and, and and throughput. So it's not just this is car throughput mobility. It's it's they may do that. And again, the infill areas will have might emphasize some roads for pedestrian and bikes, we might de-emphasize others just. For, for that, we'll have green space cores and all that. But if we look at the town with that grid of seven streets, mm -hmm. you kind of got the roads that people complain about. <laughs> I mean, the roads that that um, 
I'm glad I'm just going to make a complaint about the Cabela's lifetime. Otherwise, um, <laughs> that's on purpose, so you won't go down pain. It's supposed to be that one. Yeah, those of us who actually live that way. It's supposed to be painful. <laughs> consider going to Cabela's, buying a gun, and shooting the lights out every time we go down. But that's a different story. I don't, I'll, I'll park. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll park the front. <laughs> but if, if, if we think about those, that, that kind of creates a, a framework. Here are, the, here are the seven major uh, Scarborough corridors. Both for internal tra traffic and transfer, and yeah. through, through both. Below that, we got the complete streets concept. We got increased pedestrian and bike access, and we got things like protecting the marsh and the other elements of, of, of the that we have for the top level. Um, but we aren't missing that kind of top level of mm -hmm. here in the quarters. We want Route One to look like this. We want Pine Point the Broad to look like this. <laughs> it's a different environment. Um, or maybe we don't even know what we want it to look like, but just here's what we want it to do. Here's what we want it to do, exactly. Yeah. And then that will lead to it. Might look, it might look yeah. different. different. Oh, they should. I, 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 what I'm saying is, yeah, the, the, yeah. I don't want Pine Point where it looked like Rue 1 or yeah. like Pine um, yeah. uh, but it should have a link. Yeah. Um, and, and to me, then, then you start to move into the idea that we've got a transportation plan. As opposed to a study, and again, as a study, this stands on its own two feet. It's a pretty good study, mm -hmm. and that may be what we end up having to do with this, because I don't envision having the funding or the staff time to turn it into a master plan. Yeah, that we kind of all envision in our heads. Yeah, yeah. but maybe um, it could be used. It could be used to get us there. Yeah, yeah. But to to Peter's point, like. Not to like put this out there, but like how much value are we gonna get out of this versus like what you guys already did with Pain Road where you've kind of gotten that? Like to me, that's in this probably the most valuable output so mm -hmm. far. And I think what you just said is we want that for each of those major right. quarters so that we can say, right. yes, that's a good master plan. And then yeah. the question is then how do we chip away at them? And maybe it's not yeah. the entire segment, but we're gonna agree. To you, Roger, like what you want from Green Acres to um, uh, maybe the Downs is like a stretch to say we want that to be like the priority for Route One, and then we'll go to the next segment and the next segment. But I think that's like to me, that's what I'm interested in ultimately getting out of this is like mm -hmm. how do we know what we want, and then how do we prioritize how we get there knowing some of the funding constraints, knowing some of those things so that we can actually make progress. Oh, you know, we, we're, we're getting there with Coulomb Road, with yeah. Fleet Streets, mm -hmm. only a couple of phases away from mm -hmm. making that connection. Yeah. We know we're getting there with the downs. You can get from Route 1, um, it, it, ultimately you will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, Roger and Rod's a different story. <laughs> um, but at least two out of three, I mean. Somewhere in good shape, yeah. Okay. And just gonna sort of spy on me. <laughs> She'll say, Autumn, what did, what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> wrap this up as a study. Yeah. And, okay. Do you want to talk about Haggis Parkway Master Plan, or do you want to? Um, sure, I think so. Okay. So the Haggis Parkway Master Plan is essentially a way to, right now it's got great big right of way. So we're trying to take advantage of the existing right of way and create opportunity for more capacity, but also recognizing that we wanted it to maintain pedestrian and bike ability. Um, you would slow down the traffic, right? Right. The speed of traffic. <clears throat> and contain it too. Right. So you you're not biking on the shoulder. Because now people run on the shoulder. I drive on I guess every day. Looks like please don't do that. Um there's also <laughs> yeah, nowhere else to run. I know. Like, you do it. Yeah. Um there's also the lady that walks on Route One down the That's middle. Right. And I took a picture oh. of her the other day and I see her at least once a week in the park. She walks down the Route One medians until she gets to a crosswalk and then she goes to the side. So she crosses sidewalks. 
she terrifies me. Um, she's just walking, and that's where she's going to walk. And so there are people out there all the time. Um, but so I guess really this plan, like I mentioned earlier, would give you um, four travel lanes, the median, the esplanade, the sidewalks, the whole picture. It would be um, you know, trees, be a very nice entryway into town. Um, so in, the, in this design, what helps us when projects come in through having this you know, approved and, and ready, when they first come into the planning department and have a pre-application meeting, we pull this plan out and I'm like, okay, this is what you're looking at for your sidewalk section. And this is where we need additional, not on Haggis, but if we needed additional right away or an easement or something, we could have that discussion. And then they go through the planning board process and then it just becomes, they, they chip away at it. Like I think your um, idea and the vision they totally coincide. They don't exist separately. Yours, you just chip away at the vision. Yeah. You just don't want to have to do something twice. You know, yeah. um, Haggis Parkway is a great example. There is going to be a light at Market Street and just about 50 feet north of that is a brand new driveway into an industrial building. That is silly. Um, yeah. And that's what we don't want to have to happen because yeah. that's going to have to be redone at some point. And that didn't have to happen. So... This is a great example of why you have a plan. So we can yeah. say, no, you can't do that. With the, the reimagination of, I guess, you're mm -hmm. talking about a four lane boulevard. Uh -huh. Is that what we brought to the public? Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah. is what was at that Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. But isn't it also, yeah, it's also talking about like an S1 down the middle. Down the middle, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. yeah. would be really nice where yeah. then you could have turn lanes and that mm -hmm. would be a real parkway. Right. My vision of the parkway. Yeah, and yeah. I guess is sort of windy too, yeah. so it really lends itself a bit to that. Uh, there was there was another um, there was another there was like a super duper multi-purpose lane too. There was a bike lane, dedicated bike lane. There was a dedicated pedestrian lane. Then there was a dedicated combo lane. lane. So what was it called? Well, a combination of things. Yeah, 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 it was like a like an extra. Oh, the shared use path. Yeah. Is that yeah, the one yeah, you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. <laughs> now, when the um, when the property down close to Route One was being before the planning board a few years ago, that's when the uh, consultant for the developer was talking about a ten foot wide. Do you remember this, Jen? A ten foot wide pathway Where, running alongside. On yeah. Yeah, this was, you know. The the one that really caught my attention was sort of as part of I think it was that project actually, <laughs> but someone came in for a private development and then had to um we were looking at their sign location like where they were proposing to put their business sign at their proposed driveway and uh -huh. I I looked at what they were proposing and I thought why is that? no one's gonna see that why is that so far back. Off of the road, and then I realized it's because the right of way is a mile wide. Yeah, it's and really big. Not to put it anywhere else where it felt logical would be in the right of way. And so, um, you know, there was that project, and then a couple of others mm -hmm. where, you know, our requirement is that you build sidewalks along your frontage, but uh, out there, like, I don't know, there's just so much room to work with. And, um, and I think with, you know, eventually as these came, you know, these projects infilled along that corridor, as we've always intended them to do, um, particularly with the inclusion of housing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now you have people living there, and when mm -hmm. people live somewhere, then they want to walk. And sure. so the question is, like, do, they, do, do we really want a sidewalk in the traditional sense, like we would ask everyone else to build, where it's curved right up against the you know, the shoulder and then the sidewalks adjacent to that, or could we do something cooler with this 190 foot? 50 foot right away, right? But I think it's 150. I don't know. Well, and I think the other thing to recognize too is the idea of walking your dog and not getting clipped. Um, when you're walking up next to a four lane highway, like right. there's, you don't feel as comfortable on a regular sidewalk yeah. that's up it's against the road yeah. that you would on kind of what's mapped out here. and. And if I think about this and applying it to, say, a Route 1 quarter and, and places, this is, 
again, you keep the in the areas that have flow, you keep the flow, but you have the you can ride your bike, you can walk your dog, um, you can um, you know, and, and not feel like there's a car eight feet away from you traveling at at speed. Yeah, or even pulling out in your own car and not getting clipped from the back and someone going to sleep, you know. So the highest plan I started sort of at the beginning or at the end rather at route one. So this is the route one. And then you get up into we have a little bit more constraint down at this section. And then this is Scott O'Hill. So this is would just be the three-way light. Is the concept here because you just have less room, you're using that as a traffic common feature to merge into a single mm -hmm. lane at route one? Yeah. Um let's see. It's yeah, weird. It still... goes from one dark to two. Yeah, yeah that's what I was wondering about, too. Yeah, that, was, that one happened. It merges down. It merges down to one, and then when you come out to the intersection with the uh, the back entrance to the Irving. Yeah, we get stuck with that. I think yeah. it might be, I'll have to ask, but I think it's because you've gotten through this light, and then it's a slowing. I'll have to ask. Okay. That's yeah. Well, it's still making the light turn out of Scotto, too. Yeah. But does it need... Two lanes even approaching that? that four, there's not four lanes out there now. No, it doesn't. No, no. This is like the full build out of Hygis with four lanes on because the rest of the entire section is four lanes. It just narrows down at this point. So it goes, this is moving towards the turnpike. Um, these are those ponds and so I'm reading this right that you get a um a pedestrian right of way. Both to the north and the south of the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's the, the yeah, great. yeah, because you have people living on both sides, yep. and the idea was that we could. Uh, I think it's also nice because maybe one will naturally evolve to a bike pathway, and another will yeah, evolve. Yeah, one is path. wider, and yeah. it's it's like this is where you go if you know what you're doing on a bike. This is where you walk with your kids on a stroller, right? Would, well, yeah. <laughs> would you ever be able to put a crosswalk to get from? The left side to the right side. There is a crosswalk at Scotto Hill. So that would be one location. And then there's one at, um, so you would have okay. it there, Scotto yeah. Hill. And then the other one would be at Market Street. And that's what's being constructed right now. So you wouldn't have one at the uh, the gym intersection? I don't think so. Is that the gym? Portia. Oh, Portia. Yeah, I was just going to say the, the caution with Haggis, and we talk about a wide multi use path or whatever, is are the swales and the swampy areas along the side of Haggis really present some challenges for connectivity along there, um, particularly beyond your apartment complex, Michael. I mean, you go toward, toward Payne Road and <laughs> and it's a combination of swale and drop off and swamp. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so you're saying where where it's drawn here for the multi-use path wouldn't be really possible. So the multi-use path on the others on the side, on or your, just the this, sidewalk on the side. Just the sidewalk. Well, they've been doing it pretty. I mean, it's happening now, and it's working. Other than the gully. Yeah. 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 That needs a bridge. It's a little bit of okay. <laughs> Except that one it's piece of sidewalk way uh, up there. <laughs> it's yeah. well. Anyway, I just I remind, know, remind you that that is it's not it a simple. This is the Market Street <laughs> intersection that's been constructed now, and so this will have a four four leg. Of course, this leg doesn't match up. Um. And I, I may have missed this a long time ago, but I'm curious why the four lane cross section is so required. If there's only two lanes now, just a it's just a total future build out. If we know we need to move, and we know we're going to get pressure to move people in because I guess is really the way to get into the community. We want to get people off of pain and leaving mm -hmm. around. We want to make it function, but we also want to make it safe. So that's why. Okay. But it's not, there isn't, there hasn't been like a no. capacity. No, it's not. Like that. That's why this one is not up for an impact fee or anything yeah, like yeah. that. I it think is, it would be really important like it. to show even by way of this graphic that that is not 
that that's conceptual or that that's not been proven necessary. Gotcha. Because the cost of doing, because you're not, because, you know, <laughs> to our earlier conversation points, like, this is a big one. And this mm -hmm. one would be difficult to do in, a, you know, sure. small bites. Right. It's a big DOD project here somehow. Um, and it's notably more expensive when you are just straight adding two additional lanes. Um, yeah. And if the capacity analysis hasn't been done showing that the volume is necessary, like if we need four lanes <laughs> of through traffic on Highgate Parkway, I can't like Payne Road is going to be a parking lot and Route 1 is going to be as dysfunctional as kind of my guess, but mm -hmm. but I don't know. So I, um, you know, I think that a lot of the safety benefits that I see or know would come along with a lot of these improvements mm -hmm. get negated when you add when it's four lanes and not two lanes. So you have, you know, double threats at all of those crosswalks now and um, just higher speeds and additional pavement costs, additional drainage, and you're fully yeah. moving, you know, the whole gravel build up for the road, you know, in either direction or both directions. So anyway, I got it that it's mm -hmm. high that it's high level concept. I'm just not sure that um we need like why are we showing that as opposed to just I think it's because when we, we look at, honestly, I think it's because when we look at Route 1, there's four lanes out there now. It sucks. It doesn't have a full median, and it doesn't have pedestrian or bike. We look at Payne Road, and it sucks. And we have two lanes and no four and whatnot, and we're planning for it. So we're like, okay, knowing what we know now about Scarborough and how tra our traffic in Scarborough and where our development is and that this is in the core where we're going to have a lot of people in one place trying to get to certain places. We were like, hey, we have the right of way. Let's make it not suck. Only knowing what we know, and I totally understand, but that's why I think because we could do we could do cars, we can do people and bikes, and we can add the safety measures with the bigger esplanades and that sort of thing. So that's what yeah. the thinking was. Okay. It's like if you had yeah. if you had a chance to do Route One over, you know you would end up. Because Scarborough is just going to continue to grow. And I mean, we have hotels and more multifamily trying. I mean, every day we get calls about all sorts of people moving to Scarborough. Well, I, again, for me, like when I think of that grid of like high impact, high cost, mm -hmm. this one feels like to me low impact, high cost, at least the way this is conceptually drawn out. I guess my question is, is like, what is our vision for the HP zone where this is going through? Is it going to mostly remain green space? Because I know a lot of that land is wetland and maybe not super developable. Developable. Right. So, uh, yeah, a lot of it is, but the downs. Um, and then there's land behind the gateway apartments. There's other land along the way. There's still a lot of potential. Okay. I um, think this pocket's weird. Yeah, it's, within it's, the like, it's like intense pockets yeah. and yeah. then nice space and then intense pockets. Well, a few years ago, there was going to be a restaurant going yeah. out the pathway. Right. The There's still a little piece of land. land. Yeah. But you yeah. said you said earlier, not considering impact fees, but if the intent is that we're going to have these continued pockets of development plus mm -hmm. the downs, why wouldn't we look at impact fees for this project? It's totally possible we could in the future, and we'd already have the plan for it. Maybe in okay. five years, we're like, oh, we're getting closer to actually this might. Moving us or forward. we say, this was a stupid plan. What were we thinking? Mm -hmm. And we get, we reconfigure it. Yeah. Yeah. Again, just my personal experience sure. going on, I guess I don't really have issues, but I like the idea of, and it goes back to your thing of, for some of these plans, if we can scope them so that they have the ability to come in chunks versus doing everything all at once because that would be nice to have more biking and ped along mm -hmm. i guess as like phase one and then eventually and then it just adding, stopped yeah <laughs> but you could do that in two ways right you could add two additional pieces if you need only two as opposed to if the thought is that it might someday need four lanes you 
but but today it's only two your you know your facilities are so much further out here and then you have to either like mm -hmm. jog them in or out or you're just like nope we're committed we don't want this to be a high speed highway mm -hmm. and it's a connector you know i we were just talking about the development potential along this corridor which i think there is still some but i just i have a hard time seeing that it's enough to justify this amount of throughput um if i go back to the other major roads this is not going to be a broad turn pine point. It's not going to be a pleasant hill road. Right. This is just a connector. It's also not going to be a pain road or we want to like connect it. Yeah. So it's not a, you know, your it's intent is to get from one of those to the other of them, not like get from Saco to Portland, you know, um, or to avoid Route 1 by going on. If anything, right now it's an unfortunate barrier between the multifamily stuff that's growing right. out of Beacon and what would be yeah. multifamily friendly retail and like like commercial yeah. that. But it is how you're getting to the turnpike and we're trying to get people off of Rwanda to the yeah. turnpike. So you do want that access easy. Yeah, I, I don't so that's I the... don't think I think I think um yeah I'm not saying like less than what's there now, but I just I think I'm I don't think what's there now is being fully utilized. I think there's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think there is to, to go. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you supplement that with multimodal options, someone doesn't have to drive from the beacon to the gym because they can walk there. So now you're you know, you're reducing um you're reducing trips, you're reducing traffic, or it's someone that wants to, you know, go from downs to Cabela's or the park and ride to meet. See, I guess I think of I guess like it's more from people trying to get uh, from instead of going down pain from Dustin to get to 42, like Route 1 is not. No, I guess as somebody who lives in Pine Point, no, we, we all use pain. I know, but we're trying to get you off of pain. Yeah, and I guess it's a good way of doing it because it's a, a crappy intersection there with the lousy lights that don't let us get there and the right way to go. And those lights also that keep <laughs> us from going north on Route 1. That's how. The folks down here feel about it. Yeah. So you so Payne Road is the preferable. So they connect. Get, they cut that. through the neighborhood, who we get complaints yeah. from constantly um, that people are going too fast. Yeah. There's too many people there to get to forty two. If you go to Haggis and you get stuck in the light for ninety seconds, and you go there, you get stuck in the light here because mm -hmm. of the light timing. So you save time, top top um, time, no matter what, taking pain to get to the uh, to the turn. Or you're like me, you go down Ross Road, you go to one ninety five. But um, but that's only if now you're down in mm -hmm. the beach. Yeah, yeah. That's that whole. What is it? Hollow Street. Uh, what's the what's the, uh, where the uh, Walgreens is? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, at this time of the year, <laughs> that light drives me nuts too. Yeah, I mean that that's just so. They're all better yeah. now. <laughs> it used to be now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, much more. Yeah. Are you? What are they bad? They're well, they're bad when you come off the right. When you're coming down from Pine Point Road, so oh, that yeah. you're taking a right to get to school, mm -hmm. um, you immediately hit the light at uh, Walgreens. It's time so that light always always. It, always hits you when you're using the right hand yeah. pathway, the right hand on green light. Yeah. And and this year, this time of year, people who want to go down to the beach if they're heading south on one, yeah, they're queued up almost to the uh, flea market. Correct. And you're blocking the road there. That goes That'll happen down the weekends. I've just been driving down there a lot recently, and I've been driving from you and Eve in the mornings this week, and it hasn't been that bad. So I was just yeah. wondering, is it more on the weekends? That it's, the it's more on the week. It's definitely more in the summertime, more yeah. on the, and more on the weekends. Um, and then the other problem with Carla, too, is you've got the clueless non-local who's turning into the Walgreens yeah. to go to Pine Point. Yeah. And now they're lost and they're screwed. Yeah. So... <laughs> There's that sounds like an area maybe we could put that on the fix list. Yeah, that's yes, yeah. Because you know, you know, to me, getting people off of pain is a goal. Of yeah, and, and right now the way and, and again, you, you you think about it, you start at the broad turn road intersection, mm -hmm. you immediately hit the Harlow Road, the Harlow, Harlow Street um mm -hmm. light. You then have a long light that never goes in your favor. <laughs> also, now you've got the um the uh, Adam Labs light, the uh, um, down there too, but the traffic services place oh, yeah. that more and more and more is getting triggered by the out of lapse traffic. So it was kind of funny. I'll tell you like a funny story. I went to Bailey's the other day to make sure my little rope was in place. And as I was coming back, I came out on that road <laughs> and then there was a, a car in front of me and we had a red light and he sort of slowed down and then he ran it. 
And then I caught back up to him. And the next one was red. And he sort of, no, he wasn't speeding and no flashes. He sort of slowed down. And then he ran that one. Mm -hmm. And th and then I sped up to get, I'm like, who is this on the marsh? And I caught him. And then he ran the one at the, I guess I what were the plate? Were they yeah. Massachusetts plate? No. No. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But it, it was like his regular, like, nah, uh -huh. I'm not gonna do it. I'm yeah, and, 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 and he might be like your neighbor. Well, he it, 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 <laughs> it was his neighbor. The the, <laughs> the tractor <laughs> garage one was that that actually that got a long saying, time. Yeah. But starting <laughs> starting actually the pandemic, the Abbott Labs, I think it's going to be. <laughs> was the blue Audi? No. No, it wasn't you. It was, uh, but um, but yeah, th those those lights. Make it so that you can time it out, and you will get to the the turnpike much faster on pain. Gotcha. Than you will on that one. That seems like a time. That's good to know. Well, well, that's it, a relatively low. That's, that's a, a low, low it's, high it's, impact. High impact. Yeah. yeah. No construction needed. No, you you you, you get control, <laughs> but then you need to train the people. You, sure. need, you need to retrain. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. A generation of drivers. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. people get set in their ways, you know. Yeah. So it's, that is a hard thing to, um, to. You know, it's uh, before Dunstan, the whole Dunstan project, Dunstan uh, Village, and mm -hmm. there was. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but there was actually discussions because there was a, a people on who lived on Paint Road, you know, from. Cabrera Sun, mm -hmm. they were up and that was a big, big issue. Yeah. And there was actually discussions about Payne Road crossing for a turn and coming out right down where close to where Dunstan is. Mm -hmm. Dunstan crossing. Yep. Or oh, Dunstan Village, whichever mm -hmm. it's called. I can never remember which one. But that was and that's how Payne Road ended up the way it is now. Yeah. Because of the outcry from the residents. They, they wanted mm -hmm. if they I think if they could, they put Tax on the road. Yeah, no, yeah. They, 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 they would. Um, <coughs> which is ironic because payroll was built to avoid tax uh, a toll road. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One to a toll road. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. <laughs> um, are there any other comments, Portia? Anything else you want to add? Let me ask a question on the parkway. Is that it, would that be totally town cost to make these improvements, or would that be in conjunction with the state? It could be in conjunction. I mean, we haven't okay, really thought yeah. about Okay. Because aren't they supposed to be repaving? Doing a repaving job on that? I guess. I don't know. I, I don't I don't know. I don't and, I don't know. Where do you hear these things like that? Oh well, I don't know. Somewhere. Yeah. And um, I have no idea. And is it wasn't it also limited access? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it too. That's why that medium or the Boulevard section works really well because it is limited. We know where the access points are going to be. Right. Yeah. For for the I guess when I were talking as well, the John's point of the the box with the high impact, mm -hmm. the low impact, the high cost of the 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 one that you were showing right with the four lanes uh -huh. being, would be super high cost there. Right. Is there a thought that we could also show just the two lanes of traffic each way, and that would be a much lower cost option? Sure. And it might be a low impact. But at least they would have the low cost associated, not just like essentially thrown out immediately. Well, I, I think to just getting the idea out of putting those pedestrian and bike connectors in, um, I, that to me has real value in that club. Mm -hmm. um, right. And, um, and, and, and those are now set up to allow that for access into the downs and allow bikers and walkers to get into there and use the facilities there and whatnot. So. It's good to be having. Would would adding the four lanes do anything in terms of spurring bus transportation? Like if we're making this whole corridor a little bit more. No, what I've heard is the bus conversation really has to do more with density and people, users, and places to go to pick up people and right. riders. Yeah, right now it only stops in the downs. It doesn't come over to the beacon. I doubt the people. I don't the think the people on the beacon probably use it, would you? But the part, but not the system. Not the well, part, I, I, I would find it every every yeah. once in a while. I could see benefit because mm -hmm. right now it's either walk over to Cumberland Farms down on Route One or the downs. 
I, I can tell you that there's you know, <laughs> conversations on certain corridor, familiar corridors in Portland, whereby if we were to take an eraser to the whiteboard and sort of start over again, places like Brighton Avenue um, would be well served to have a four lane section with, with a lane in each direction dedicated to bus transit service, mm -hmm. dedicated, so not cars, just mm -hmm. buses. Um, there's some thought about that. Similarly, for Congress Street, out of Congress Street, kind of in from Westbrook into Portland. Um, but other than that, like, so you know, those would probably make sense in Portland. So it's it's a little harder. Yeah. I think I'm just providing that as context, but like, I'm not sure that probably generally because of length, mm -hmm. um, I guess wouldn't be a good. You you would have to. That section of roadway would have to bear so much regular traffic to preclude or to make the bus service not effective. I think you could absolutely effectively run a bus service on Highgate Parkway in terms of like what Highgate Parkway looks like. Now, whether there's adjacent uses that justify transit, that's like a different situation, but like the, the cross section, the infrastructure on Highgate itself, I should think a standard. You know, two lanes uh, cross section with turn with turn lanes would be appropriate, particularly if there's signalized intersections. Mm -hmm. So you you're turning traffic is sort of out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's not really now in in the report they they discussed um, road design. Um, you know where you have a festival knot in the middle, but have a lodge, so the road is curved. Do you recall reading that? No. Um, I, I I actually saw that down in Florida, and it was mm -hmm. very similar in length that the parkway is, and it was really nice. It really it had a little bend to it, and it had the median grassy shrubs mm -hmm. and everything bulge out. So you had to actually slow down. You, yeah, gotcha. it's it's a slow. It's a traffic yeah. you know speed reducing feature. They had some fancy you know some fancy name like squiggly or something. <laughs> it was, it was like a chicane or something like that. Yeah. But that would be nice there because then, then if you had the, the, the walkways and everything, it'd make it really like a real nice parkway. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna make Angela sit in on your meetings after this? I'm gonna make her do long range. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for your own. No, I was going to come anyway. Yeah. I just wasn't going to come alone. <laughs> it's all right. Did the planning board alone. Listen. She's loved me. She's had a really good time. That's good. Oh, that's just... I hope she's drinking for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This was really helpful. Uh, oh, we should formally uh, move to item four, which is public comment. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, here we go. Oh, I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anyone online either. Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Great. I'll make a motion. Who, oh, you made it? Sure. Okay. Who seconded it? I will. Thank you, sir. Great. Okay. Oh, all in favor? Great. Thank you, everybody. You. The one thing to share with this group, oh, in case you're interested, 